Here's a description from Justin. These aliens are a type of bird. They have two huge wings and two strong legs with a wide, elegant tail. They have two eyes which sit rooted in their sockets and can often make them appear to be evolutions. Their eyesight is not too great at distances. Their huge pointy beaks often make these aliens appear to be untrustworthy, but worse can be deceiving. Their ears will hidden and their healing is not that great. Their skin is very strong, but not very thick. It's covered in small white feathers. Their feather colors are mostly black, light pink, light silver, and white. Which tend to become dim as they age. The males are usually more cunning than their female counterpart and their colors are darker. The females, however, are usually faster. Here's another description from Bethany. This lovely and uncommon creature is a type of bird. It's about the size of a duck. It has two huge wings, two strong legs, and a short, elegant tail. They have soft, delicate skin covered in short, white feathers, and is usually either white, dark, gray, or red, or a combination of these colors. They live in warm areas and are quite common. They're omnivores, and their beaks are narrow, and their tongue are ideal for eating fruits. They're crepsical, and uh, rely on extra sense and sun to get around. They do have thin beaks, but their sense of smell is not that great. They have small beady eyes and tiny, almost hidden ears. Their heads are relatively large in comparison to their bodies. They make sounds ranging from relatively high-pitched to fairly high-pitched and have the limited of range of sounds to make indicate discoveries, dangers, and other ways to communicate with each other. These animals are quite timid, but they'll defend their territory strongly. They mate one, once every two years, and they will mate with just one partner for life, which but their fairly long lifespans is to be expected. Here's another description from Brittany. He's cheerful, sweet, energetic, and perhaps a little too foolish, but this is all vacate, a mechanism to deal with his position. He was born in a large family in a large village. He lived out of trouble until he was about 19 years old. But at that point, things began to change. He started to travel around the world and was among the most popular people. With the help of great friends, he made a fortune in a strange world. But with his friends and skills, there was nothing to stop him from doing anything. He could quickly become a force to be reckoned with. Despite all his success, this success, he is currently looking for a place to truly call home. He feels that like there's more incredible sights to behold in this world. Luckily, he has wise teachers and great friends to support him. Here's the next description for Violet. She's, he's mysterious, harsh, and loyal. But there's more than this to something in his ugly past. He was born and grew, he, and grew up in a poor family in a developed city. He lived without worry until he was about 10 years old. But that point, point life changed. He lost his money after rebellion and was neglected by everybody. Together with a pet, he had to survive in a criminal world. But with his cunning and perverseness, he managed to start a new life and dream for perfection. This turned into the man he is today. Still affected by the past, he now works as a help for hire. By doing so, he hopes to learn, uh, support a new honest life and finally find Quinn when he, he has never had. Here's another description from Dylan. Black long hair is pulled back to reveal a fresh, sad face. Wide brown eyes set a paling within their sockets, watch admiringly over the city they've rarely felt at home for so long. A beard charmingly complements his eyes and cheekbones, and leaves a heartbreaking memory of his fortunate looks. This is the face of Brock Gandy, a true romancer among humans. 
He stands towering above others, despite his heavy frame. There's something enthralling about him. Perhaps it's his sense of humor, a uh, sense of honor, or perhaps it's his personality. N but nonetheless, people tend to pretend to be his best friend while trying to simply look more like him. Here's another description from Katie. Ginger shaggy hair. Tight but in a ponytail with a razor lean, anguished face. Hollow brown eyes, set well within their sockets. Watched lovingly over the farms and he'd been friended for so long. Fire has left a mark stretching from the bottom of her right cheekbone, running towards her upper lip, and ending on her right cheekbone. Leaves a per pleasurable memory of departed love. This is the face of Sheeta Burning Fury. A true romance is her arms orcs. She stands big among others despite her skinny frame. There's something mystifying about her. Perhaps it's her patience, or perhaps it's her simply her good looks. But nonetheless, people tend to treat her like family while thinking of ways to become her friend. Here's the next description from Richard. The country of Asia is a small country with a population of 9,604,694 trolls. Bored and bordered between the canal to the north, huge mountains to the south, a calm sea to the east, and a small sea to the west. The country of Asia mainly lives of carpeting, beer brewing, and alchemy. Asia itself is mainly covered in wastelands and has a warm climate, which has to lead to scattered population, despite the number of people, which means most of them live in hamlets. The, con <clears throat> the country's landscape is delightful. Dramatic rock formed in small hidden ponds and luscious fields are just silver and majesty. Asia has to offer which is why the country is favored in destination among foreigners. The people of Asia are lighting towards foreigners and tend to welcome them with greed. The foreigners would hamper the country's well-being. Asia is a flexi has flexible laws and law enforcement, which is to be expected. The people are unbalanced due to the recent wars caused by an ancient curse. Ancient curse. This is also reflected in the country's flag, which has three vertical shapes and a triangle in pink, dark red, and light silver. Their coat of arms is a chicken on a hexagon. Here are the next three descriptions from Skylar. Every six months, the festival of tranquility is celebrated with enchanted hearts. It's a holiday with time on its roots, but today is mostly associated with love and romance. Singing songs, wearing homemade costumes, and celebrating imagination. It is officially celebrated for nine days, but the opening hours are by far the most beloved hours and looked forward by all. Every two years, the Festival of Earth is celebrated with Grudge Year. It's a holiday with, with age-old roots, but today it's mostly associated with skilled-based contests, sketchy beer hunts, some traditional hairstyling, and wearing homemade costumes. It is officially celebrated for 10 days, but decorations are off the scene weeks before the actual celebrations. Every six months, the Festival of Languages is celebrated with, spec uh, with great expectations. It's a holiday with re religious roots. But today, it is mostly associated with telling jokes, watching special shows, love, and romance, and colorful lights. It, it is officially celebrated for three days, but decorations are often seen around for weeks after the celebrations. Here are the last two descriptions by Frankie. It's easy to get to know an open person like Joel Holland, but there's anything you should know that he's relaxed and realistic. Of course, he's also dutiful, planful, and observant, but 
and there are these lesser traits contained by behaviors of being greedy as well. His relaxed nature, though, is what he's pretty much known for. People regularly call him this in his sweet nature whenever they need assistance for help. Nobody's perfect, of course, and Joel has a share of darker signs to deal with, too. His self and self indulgence and obsessive nature is exactly aren't exactly fun to deal with and can ruin plan, plenty of neat things. Fortunately, his realism assures that this isn't a cause case very often. You may not notice when this when first meeting Lewis Perry, but the fact he's unfriendly and vindictive is just the tip of the iceberg. To make things worse, he's also envious, hateful, and provocative. But at least those are kept somewhat in check of habits by being active as well. But focus on his at this is what he's most feared. Almost feared. Even careful encounters have been ruined because of this and her pedantic nature. But different strokes for different folks, I guess. Fair's fair though. Lewis didn't turn anything, everything into dust. He's sensitive and aspiring for a look of it. There's still a beacon of hope. Unfortunately, his vindictive nature has always been counted on to turn things back for the worst. See you next time. Bye.